everybody. Welcome to episode five of Kitty Cat Go Live, where we discuss various topics related to traveling and adventuring with your cat. I'm your host, Emily Hall, and tonight we'll be chatting about catios, gardening for cats, and ways to bring the outside into your cat. If you're watching with us tonight, be sure to say hello in the comments and where you're watching from. Questions are encouraged along the way as well. Let's go ahead and dive in. Our special guest for the evening is Yaz Nachbendi. Yaz is an award-winning blogger and owner of Chirpy Cats. She is passionate about catios, gardening for cats, and loves to share DIY cat enrichment hacks with her readers. Her mission is to help cats live enriched lives with their people. When she's not writing about creative ways to grow cat grass, she volunteers as a writer for the Jackson Galaxy Cat Positive Pro program. She is a professional member of the Cat Writers Association as well. All right, let's bring her on. Hey, Yas. Hey, Emily. Hey, everyone. Um, so where are you joining us from tonight? I'm joining from Montreal, um, Canada, and uh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. I know we have some other Canadians in the group who are excited and one from Montreal as well, who is here. Okay, Shout out to great. Val um, and Grace and uh, Brenda. Thank you guys all for being here. Um, so, uh, yes, tell us a little bit about yourself and your cats before we get into the all the details. Well, uh, as I said, I live in Montreal. I have a true multi-cat household, uh, nine cats to be exact. Yeah. And uh, so what we love doing in the summer is having uh, catio adventures. I'm passionate about catios and cat enrichment, basically helping cats live in rich lives with their people. Um, so, and I blog at chirpycats.com. Awesome. Awesome. So um, before we get into the discussion, I wanted to show everybody your awesome catio because it is the catio of dreams, guys. I don't know if you've checked out her Instagram or blog yet, but um, it, it's my goal. <laughs> my catio catio goals. Is small, <laughs> and I plan on adding to it and hopefully it will be as awesome as yours one day. So I'm going to um, share my screen and show a video. This is my first time doing this screen share, so hopefully it will work the way it's supposed to. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, well, bear with me, guys. I'm doing my best. Hopefully this will work. Okay. Um, share. Yay, okay. So um, <laughs> here now is your awesome catio. Can everybody see this? The, the Instagram video, is that showing up? No. No. Okay. Take two. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about this? Can everybody see this? Yes, yeah, something's opening. Okay, okay. Well, here is Yaz's catio. I just love all the plants and uh, the tunnels. Those are my favorite. Which cat that's, is this in the video? That's Sly Pie, and that's the racetrack. <laughs> Awesome. Ah, oh, it's so cool. So many flowers and plants. That's called the maze, uh, the maze garden. Well, it's not really a maze, you know, but uh, for the cats it is. <laughs> yeah, it's like a maze to me. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's so cool. All right. And Sorry, what were you going to say? That's the spot where they actually watch the groundhogs. Ah, oh, it's so cool you have groundhogs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and the bridge. So cool. All right, so that is Trippy Cat's Catio. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. Um, so cool. Um, okay, so now tell us, when did you start building that catio? I mean, as we saw in that video, it's, it's really big and has so many different parts. 
Did you yeah. build, it, build it all at once or how, how did that come about? Yeah, absolutely not. So we built it in stages. Um, we started uh, building the catio in 2013. And the backstory to that was I've always wanted to build a cat enclosure. Um, I used to, uh, my two, I, I leash trained my two older um, senior cats actually. And you'd be glad to know, I was actually, uh, my cats, they were adventure cats. That's they, they start, the two seniors were adventure cats when we lived in Ireland. Um, I used to go to cat shows and we used to, on, on, on our journeys, on our little stops, we used to stop over and um, we used to walk on the beaches and the cliffs and uh, my older cat, Earl Grey, was, uh, uh, he's been to the cliffs of Moher, so he's traveled and, and he, he's a, he was a good example of, a, of an adventure cat. So coming, so moving, moving around and moving back to Canada, um, that was my goal, to build a catio. And when my husband announced he's building a catio that particular year, I was amazed because, and also it was from a practical point of view, I didn't, I mean, leash training, like at the time, five cats, we have nine now, but at the time it was five, was just not an option, right? Um, so yeah. I still wanted them to have that out, the, uh, the, the outdoor, uh, access to the outdoors, you know? Um, yeah. So we, we started off with the, with the main structure. It's an eight by, no, it's a 10 by 12 by eight high structure. Um, that particular year, the following year, I did all the catification, the plants catification and everything. Um, and it wasn't until um, we rescued Sly Pie, the little tuxedo Capri pants that you saw in the, in the tunnels there, that we um, added more and we did more modifications to the catio. Um, by building more tunnels and the, um, what is it called, the skywalks and uh, the bridges. So it just took off from there. And um, so it was, it started off very simple and very humble sized uh, main catio that, that we call um, Chirpy's Lair. And now we've moved on to all the various sections. So um, uh, that's, they, uh, I'm not sure if you're going to do anything this summer but um, we'll see, you never know. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I, ours has started as a very small enclosure and I have grand plans for it as well. Absolutely, so. I can imagine. <laughs> and and it's, it's funny how it doesn't have to be um, big modifications. It doesn't even have to be a huge catio. Um, what I find with the cats is the tunnels, what I actually call a tunnel vision, give your cats tunnel vision, because it actually, um, it creates a sort of, it, it creates a, a sense of space for them, just a new space to explore when you're actually making these tunnels. And especially if you're interconnecting them via a skywalk, because they view that space as extra territory to conquer, if you will, you know. So when you're creating, um, because they don't see the world the way we do, right? In, in yeah. uh, um, sort of in two dimensions, um, in terms of square footage, let's put it that way. They don't view it like that. They view it vertically, they view it, and, and they have, they, they carve their own little paths to, to conquering their little kingdoms. So it can yeah. be, a small little nook in the corner of your catio next to a plant um, that can be enriching and that can be like, you know, one cat will sort of take over that space of the catio and you think, oh, my catio is so small, but no, it's not. They all have their little um, nooks and, and, and little spaces that they conquer in their little heads, you know. So building the tunnels um, to give them tunnel vision was something that was really enriching for, for our cats. Yeah, I imagine so. That's my next thing that I want to do to ours is add um, some tunnels. I think that would be like the easiest thing to do based on what our current design and situation is. Mm -hmm. So tunnels, I'm trying to convince my husband. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not yet, not right now, not yet. I'm like, I, please. <laughs> I, actually, I actually have a blog post on, on that particular um, very easy, easy tunnels in one weekend, you know, that, that you can put to together. Yeah, I'll have to send that to him and be like, here, look at this. It's not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, 
you mentioned like it's okay even if your catio space is small you know something is is great your cats are going to appreciate any kind of space but what can we do to spruce up our catio spaces i know looking at yours you obviously have a lot of greenery and plants and stuff like that so what kind of tips do you have to turn a small little area outside into you know a yes. magic land <laughs> yeah so definitely i find that plants uh plants is basically it's the number one um catification sort of element uh of of creating that outdoor space because um, you can, and many people are scared of plants because they don't know what to choose. There, there are actually quite a few easy growing plants that are um, cat safe, mm -hmm. that will provide that sense of cat, you know, that sense of, of, um, uh, in, you know, um, not just catification, but uh, it creates a, um, a vibe you know, an ambience for, for your catio, you know. So the other thing that I like also is what is the other element of um, Zen? It's creating that Zen space is a water fountain. So um, I have two bamboo fountains in my catio and um, together with um, cleverly placed plants next to it and especially plants that um, I have these three uh, three tiered um, uh, platform in the catio, and I have a Swedish ivy plant that cascades over the um, the pot of the plant, and it's a, it's it's the easiest. You you say you have black thumbs, but it's the yep. easiest plant to grow, and it's so prolific in the summer, and it will grow in shade, it will grow in in sun, it will grow in partial shade. So I love my Swedish ivy. Um, the cats hide underneath it, again, creating another little nook for the cats. Um, so it's plants, water fountain. Um, what I also like is uh, cat sculptures. So, so any little sort of um, object that you can even find at your dollar store at, at um, Ikea, you know, like um, even, even stools meant for little kids um, yeah. will work, you know. Um, because yes, we all build our shelves, our, our catification shelves. That's that's the first thing that we we try and do when we build the catio. But um, these little odd objects, just just going to your Walmart and 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 find something like quirky or odd looking, you know. Hmm, I'm always doing that. I'm like, oh, maybe that will will you know fit you know be perfect for the catio. You know, whether it's something from from a dollhouse or a treehouse that you can retrofit to put into your cat here will work. Um, so, so those are an absolutely light. So I use, I like solar lights, um, different, you, you can just go wild with, with lights, you know, it's, um, it really creates that, uh, it, it creates the finishing touch for, you know, and I always say cats, ca cats have very, you know, they can see in the dark, you know, with ambient light, but, Bug hunting is not complete without some uh, uh, lighting for them, especially at night. If you let your yeah. cats out in the catio at night, which I do. Yeah, and the lights will attract bugs too, which will- Exactly, bug hunting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so we have a couple of questions related to what you've mentioned already. So I wanna go ahead and uh, bring those up. Um, Someone asked about lighting, which you just touched on, and what is the platform or floor of your catio? I have um, patio stones. Um, I a, so a lot of people have uh, covers for the catios. I don't like a roof because I like that sort of outdoorsy feel. Um, I want them to feel the rain. I want them to feel the snow, whatever, you know, the, the snow cats that love the snow. Um, so the flooring, it's... Um, are you when we use um, patio stones two reasons um, you can just hose it off when it gets dirty um, um, you can all the cats love it the cats like that feeling of you know when, when the stone gets hot in the sun and they roll or that's the first thing they do actually is um, say on a cold crispy morning but it's sunny um, they're still heat seeking so yeah. they're going to go for the and and this is not just the the 
what I call the bush dwelling cats, you know, the, the tree dwelling and the bush dwelling cats. This is all of them. Um, they, the first thing they do is they run in, they dash into the catio and they roll on the, those patio stones. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's like, okay, this is like, he's just enjoying himself, you know, in his little sun puddle on the patio stones. So, um, we've got it now in for eight years and it's still, still getting good. That's awesome. I have the patio stones is a great idea right now. Our floor, our catio is just built on our back deck. That was already there. It's yes. like a wooden, wooden floor, but I want to expand like into the grass and all of that too. So patio stones, I'll have to keep that in mind. Yes. Um, so what about people who might have a rooftop terrace? Would a lot of the tips and stuff that you gave for catios, could that work for a rooftop terrace area as well? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, like I say, a lot of people, when they do um, making like um, a rooftop terrace would, would actually work. You, um, I, I have seen another catio that actually has netting, um, like a... Um, she's on a balcony she has a lovely large balcony and she uses netting to totally enclose them the balcony so um i think i mean the, the rooftop terrace is all you already have your space you know you don't even have to do much to it really yeah yeah i've got the sun and everything and you you probably can't plant it's, plants in the ground but you could do lots of potted plants or something absolutely right? so potted plants i actually the majority of my plants um are in the catio is um obviously because i'm not I, I have patio stones so i have large barrels of cat grass that's one thing i forgot to mention is a great enrichment um element to bring into your catio is a two it has a twofold function a, a huge barrel of cat grasses um, and some ornamental grasses that you don't need, even need just cat grass. You can, they're actually all, most of the ornamental grasses are cat safe. So the grasses like uh, Carex grass, um, purple fountain grass, um, which is the other one, um, um, Lysomachia, which is the creeping Jenny, all, all different types of um, grasses you can grow in a huge barrel and um, our cat, um, Sly Pie, he, he loves doing this. He makes a grass bed. So mm -hmm. they'll munch it. They'll, uh, it'll, it'll be a salad bar for a week. And after a week, it becomes a grass bed. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And, and it doesn't die because it's, it's so prolific. It just keeps growing. Um, it flattens a little bit, but um, they, they love it. And also grass is cooling. So it's good to know, on a, it's, it's really nice um, to keep your cats cool um, in the catio on a hot summer's day, is to, um, is to just put pot, pots of, whether it's cat grass, whether it's pots of, like I mentioned, the big barrel grass, um, your cats will appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, is lemongrass cat friendly? Someone asked, asked about lemongrass. Yeah, there's a bit of uh, conflicting information with lemongrass. Um, my cats, I actually do grow lemongrass and Mr. Jack loves munching on lemongrass. I think the, the info about lemongrass is people are always concerned because um, I, th I think it's got to do with the essential oil, um, mm. which is the, and in, in different terms, it's called citronella. So it's not really the same thing. Yeah. Um, but Mr. Jack is an avid lemongrass muncher, so um, he, he hasn't had any issues. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Um, someone also asked, how do you keep bees out of your catio? Um, if you don't want bees in your catio, then you would, uh, it's best to um, put netting um, to keep the bees out, as well as mosquitoes, I guess, but I, I don't. Um, I think it's be well because I do a around my catio, around the periphery of my catio, I have I grow lots of bee friendly grass, uh, sorry, bee friendly, not grass, bee friendly flowers like cosmos and those kinds of things because I actually want to encourage the bee, I want to create a sort of a cottage garden, bee, bee friendly garden. But if you don't yeah. want, and just to look, things ha happen, nothing has ever happened before. My cats do not go for the bees i think it's something instinctive that they know <laughs> yeah they 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 hear the buzz and it's it sounds almost like a 
a a purr, I suppose. And um, they actually don't go for the bees. They'll they'll look at it in amazement and and afterwards, ah, oh, I'm sure you're not tasty. So uh, oh, I'll go for the bugs. I'll go for the moths. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, our catio, um, well, the entrance to our catio is through a window in our house. And so we can open or close the window to let the cats out. Or if we don't want them to go out, we keep the window closed. And I don't want bees and wasps and mosquitoes because it's also a direct entrance into our house. Yes. So uh, we have screen. We got like yes. some pet safe screen. And so that's what we have around our catio instead of like the chicken wire um and so that works really well we we have had a couple of wasps get in the catio this year but um we just got them out <laughs> yeah so absolutely as you say you have the screen so if you're really concerned about bees then the screen is the way to go yeah it, it's worked well for us um all right so what kind of tips do you have for somebody who might not have a lot of space like your catio is so big you know it takes up your whole, whole yard what about somebody who might live in an apartment or um you know just not have a big area that they can build a patio what are some ways that they can create an oasis retreat for their cats yes so definitely you can use um i don't know the um the actual name for it, but basically it's like netting it's like very strong nylon netting that you can attach to your um, the the front wall of your balcony and attach it up on top of the roof and it's very discreet um, and also you get these little um, uh, it, it's almost like wall like not wall plugs but um, it sticks to the concrete of the your wall or your balcony or whatever and it mm -hmm. attaches so there's no drilling required or anything like that um, oh yes so so definitely you can do that for your balcony because i or if you know if your landlord is um you know open to um you know doing something more permanent then that's also a, um, a suggestion but i know these these screens they last for they they're quite hardy um and also you would think that it's flimsy these screens but actually cats don't uh like they won't climb on something that is uh, a little bit loose and and, yeah. and draping yeah so, my cats don't climb on our screen or anything exactly because once they touch it like oh I, I don't know what this is and then they'll leave it alone mm -hmm. so um the same the, it's the same concept with um the brand in the uk called protector pit um, it, actually, if we, if, if our bylaws allowed us to put things on our fences, I probably wouldn't have, you know, built the caddy. I would just, well, let's make the oasis in my whole backyard. Um, yeah. but, but that is an option. Protector pet is, um, I don't know what's the equivalent here in North America. Um, but it's an awesome design that actually prevents your cat from it's at an angle like that. Oh, it's one of those also, things that open the fence. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And and it's not it's flimsy the um the, the part that hangs because that that's the part that prevents your cat from from jumping on it because they don't like jumping on something that's um you know not sturdy or, or not a sturdy structure. Yeah, I know we do have something like that at least here in the United States because I've seen it advertised. I'll have to look into that and I can share. A link with everybody like maybe email it out or whatever at some point yes. and i plan on writing a blog post with all this information too so wonderful <laughs> I'm really to that because so i know it exists but i can't think of the name of the company um so you talked a little bit about some of the cat friendly plants and stuff that you have can are there any more that you haven't mentioned that are really great for catios and that are easy to grow as well yes yes <laughs> i do so um when people build catios the first of all is your catio does it get lots of sun or is it more um uh, in a shaded spot um it has a roof on it so it doesn't get direct like, sun direct sun from above but depending on the angle of the sun like mm -hmm. especially in the evening when the sun is like on the other side it gets some um sunlight in it yeah but because of the screen it's exactly it's not too sunny 
Yeah. So for those, so I thought it, I thought that would be the case. So for those, I would um, definitely go with the Swedish ivy, um, the plant that I mentioned that that just cascades out of its pot and it's just so beautiful and prolific and it has a lovely lemon peppery scent. Um, you will often see the cats come by and take a little sniff like, hmm, what is this? Oh, okay, let me lie underneath it, you know. So the Swedish ivy, um, nasturtium, um, which is actually also edible for humans, by the way, they're great in salads. Um, those just grow, ev just grow everywhere and, and you get the vining ones and you get um, the um, draping ones, the cascading ones. Um, so those are great and they come in beautiful colors and they just bloom all, all summer long. And they'll um, grow in shade. They'll grow in shade. They'll yeah. absolutely grow in shade because that's why I asked you the question. So, yeah. so these are the ones that will, that will do well in your catio because they don't need direct sun. Um, the other one you can get is for hanging baskets, uh, definitely spider plants. Mm. Um, no, uh, Catified house or catified catio is complete without spider plants because they really grow well. You can forget to water them and they will just, you know, continue. And then in the wind, well, you probably don't have to bring in because you're in Georgia, but I have to bring in my, my plants um, when it gets cold. <laughs> so yeah. you just bring it in uh, depending on what climate you, you have, right? Yeah. Um, of course, catnip now. Here's a tip I have. So lots of people say, oh, my cats completely decimate my, my catnip plant when I've grown it, blah, 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 all of that. So just grow them in hanging baskets. So mm. um, I have two in my catio itself that, that, that's besides the ones that, um, that, my, um, that grows in my garden. Um, but obviously if it's in a, in a basket, in a hanging basket, it won't grow that high, but still you get a, a great yield from it. So the reason why I say hanging baskets, because your cats can take a nibble. If you have a super highway, um, they can, you know, nibble on it and break a few leaves off, but they're not going to completely trash it because again, the basket is swinging and they won't jump in it because it's not stable but they'll be yeah. able to, to get, grasp hold of it. And then I also have, um, uh, oh, that's what I did when I built the catnip tunnel as well, because I grow the catnip on either side of the tunnel so the cats can't get to it, but they can enjoy themselves with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And another plant that you should get also is um, very easy to grow, um, doesn't need lots of watering, is impatience. So it's beautiful um, oh, uh, flowers, cool. yeah. Uh, the African daisy, and did I mention the sunflower? So I have oh, giant yeah. sunflowers growing. Um, I use those mostly on the periphery of my catio. So it provides um, shade um, on the other side because um, I use the giant sunflowers and they just um, grow very tall. So um, that's something uh, that, that you could consider as well. Or you can yeah. get the dwarf ones that you can actually grow inside your catio in a pot. Oh, yes, that's neat. Yeah, I didn't know there were dwarf sunflowers. Yeah, you can grow they the ones that don't grow too high, so you can you can get those too. Um, African daisies as well, but those would need a little bit more sunlight. So maybe you can just grow a pot outside of your catio. Mm -hmm. um, if you if you want to, um, you know, a little bit of color for outside of your catio. Um, yeah, and also there's the sweet potato vine that you can put in hanging baskets as well. Is that so, related to the sweet potato, like the? Uh, potato? Yes, it actually is. Um, it's actually also it's listed as one of the cat uh, as one of the cat friendly plants on the ASBA ASBCA website. Um, but it's beautiful. It has purple leaves and it also drapes. Um, you'll see. Baggy, one of my cats playing with like, you know, tapping the leaves on the super highway um, in one of the, the, the videos. Yeah. Um, but it's also a, a plant that just um, I recently tried actually last year. Um, I thought, oh, let, let's see how this grows. And it, it actually just, um, you know, flourishes in the summer. So minimal care. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, so speaking of minimal care, <laughs> 
I attempted to grow some cat grass recently. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> I grew it from seeds. I found seeds for cat grass at my local hardware store and I sprinkled the seed. The direction said just sprinkle them on top of the dirt, which I thought was weird. Like I would think you would cover them, but whatever. Um, so I sprinkled them and this is like two weeks. It's been growing for two weeks. And yesterday it was nice and standing up. And today it is very sad. <laughs> <laughs> what, what tips do you have for growing cat grass? Okay. First of all, are those oat grass seeds or wheat grass seeds? No idea. Oh, so I it's just, just a, it's probably a mix. Yeah, yeah, I just, the package, um, I guess I probably could have read some fine print that was on it, but it just said cat grass. And I was like, oh, cool, I'm getting that. Um, but it, <laughs> it does have a mix of like white and green, which I thought was weird too. Okay, that, that is interesting. Yeah. So cat grass. So um, I grow a mix of oat grass and wheat grass seeds. So basically um, wheat grass is really the, the seeds, the, the, the wheat berries it's called, is the seeds that people use to uh, for juicing and, you know, you know, um, to mix in your smoothies and so forth, yeah. um, which I do. Um, but so I grow the wheat grass and the oat grass. I think my cats actually like both. I think the oat grass is slightly sweeter. But I soak them before. So I soak them for four to six hours before I actually sow them in the soil. I did and that. yes. And I tried growing them both covered and uncovered. And it doesn't really, I found it made a slight difference in the growth of the plant when mm -hmm. I covered them because I did that experiment. But. Um, I think it's the watering issue. Like also you need to um, keep it moist, like not drown them, but I spray them all the time. So I spray mm -hmm. my cat grass. I use a, a water, yeah, just to spray it, you know, um, because I planted cat grass um, a month ago and it's actually still going strong. <laughs> That's awesome. But then again, it just could be the type of seed because sometimes you do get dud seeds. I have to say <laughs> yeah yeah i since i just sprinkled them on top i can look down and like see all the seeds that i have and some of them don't have anything coming out of them <laughs> so yeah I figured maybe they wouldn't all grow yes some of them don't grow like you will see the extra seeds um at the bottom but sometimes they actually come up later you know mm -hmm. what i also do is i do trim my cat grass so um, I think it encourages the other seeds or more, more, more to grow um, yeah. because I've been doing that for, for with my cat grass um, and, and it lasts quite a, quite a while, you know, um, it's now, yes, it was, it was a month since I've grown my cat grass and it's still looking green. <laughs> cool. So is the wiltiness, is that like I need to water it? I think so. Yes. Okay. Yes, I would, I would do that. Okay. Or maybe just start over, right? Yeah. <laughs> do you have more seeds? Just start over. No, but I, they were like 50 cents or something. I can go get some yeah. more. <laughs> and um, also you can grow, um, what I like doing is growing cat grass um, in different substrates as well. So you can do it in coconut coir. You can do it in, if you don't want to mess with messy soil, you can grow them in water beads as well. Um, so sometimes I use, I sow them directly onto the water, water beads, what the, did I say water seeds, water beads, water seeds. Oh, I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, water beads, and you can try them with, uh, sowing, sowing the seeds directly on the beads, or you can try, um, grow mats as well. So, um, it's, it's really, it looks very pretty in a glass bowl. Um, growing the cat grass, especially for uh, for us. I mean, I, I like I said, I always get upset when I have to pack up my catio in the winter um, because I know the snow is coming, and then it's time for all these indoor enrichment um, uh, cativities, as I call them, for the cats. So that's yeah. when I grow. I, I try different um, substrates to grow the cat grass. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was wondering when I went to the um, hardware store and got the seeds. I was wondering what kind of dirt to grow them in and i mean most all the dirt has 
fertilizer and stuff. And I didn't want that because if my cats are eating the plants in the dirt, I didn't want them to eat fertilizer. So finding dirt that didn't have any fertilizer in it was difficult. I did manage to find just some topsoil. Um, mm -hmm. But I'll have to look into the other ideas you mentioned. That's neat. The the water beads and the grow mat. I haven't heard of that. Yeah. I actually did. I, I made them a grass pond, um, which just consisted of, uh, I actually have a blog post about it. Um, um, it's actually just um, a bowl and then a little fish bowl in the middle of the bowl, put water in uh, the bigger bowl. And the little bowl is the bowl with the sea, with the um, water beads that the grass is growing in. And then I got these little robot fish to go um, around and the cats just, you know, yes. had a ball of a time. <laughs> yes, we have some of those robotic fish. They're the best. <laughs> um, a couple of questions. Um, Brenda is wondering if you're going to come out with another calendar. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yes, yep. uh, this, uh, last year I did the Sly Pie edition because he's, he's here with us for five years. Thanks, Brenda. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and she also is wondering if all of these cat grass ideas that you have are on your website, which yes. um, they are, yeah. Yes, yeah, the grass so pond. Uh, the grass pond one is um, the um, growing, uh, making a grass puzzle. Uh, for your cats using egg cartons is on there as well. And I just need to update and the other one for making um, my new grass puzzle. So stay tuned. Yeah. yeah so tell us about these puzzles. I, I actually have, um, I have some links to drop and share for everybody. Um, I know you use your cat grass to make these puzzles. I'm dropping a link now, everybody in the comments to a video of uh, how to make a DIY cat grass puzzle that Yaz made. So it's really neat. I am definitely uh, inspired to give it a try. <laughs> Tell us about those puzzles. Yes. So the, the one on the Instagram one was definitely the winner. Um, but in addition to that, I have another one which I will share um, in, in a blog post coming up. But those puzzles are Definitely, um, the cats love it. it again, that, that's one of my indoor captivities, um, my, my indoor winter captivities. <laughs> yeah. um, the grass puzzles, I, I thought that was the time I was exploring what else can grass grow in besides soil. And then I had this idea of, um, I like upcycling things and, and so on. So the, um, the egg cartons, um, the plastic egg cartons, I thought that will be a perfect um, puzzles for my cats. So I chose the middle parts of the egg cartons, three or four of them. I put some stones in and some grow mats. I cut it really tiny and I sprinkled some grass seeds and the grass grew <laughs> in this little space. Yeah. So yeah, it was quite, quite amazing. It didn't need soil at all. Um, just lots of spraying with water and then I fill the other bits um, with uh, cat toys as booby traps so they yeah. had to first remove the cat toys to get at the treats at the bottom of it so I used um, bread ties and um, what else the, the milk tops the milk uh, little what do you call those rings the milk rings as booby traps and uh, and they had, and then it was funny to see that some of them were actually, um, it, they were all around it together. And there's a YouTube video of that too. Um, some of them are munching the grass and some of them are trying to get at the, the food. So um, it was just like a, a, a multi enrichment, uh, <laughs> multi cat enrichment activity at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that this is all like made out of stuff that, most people probably already have at their house with the exception exactly. of like the grass seeds maybe, but the egg carton and the milk ring and cat yes. toys and stuff like that. It's a really great repurposing of materials. I love that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so while I'm sharing links, I meant to share this one a little bit earlier. This is a link to how, how Yaz harvests her catnip, which is really neat. 
because um, I want to try growing catnip. And I didn't realize that you had to cut it and then let it dry out for a while. That's really interesting. Yeah. Well, not you don't have to do what I did, but I find that it really strengthens the, the you know, the efficacy or the potency of it. Um, mm -hmm. Like I say, all that nip to lactone just like soaks into the leaves. Probably that's just just how I imagine it, um, because yeah. I do give it out to pass it out to my colleagues, and they all say that the cats just grab their their handbags <laughs> when they you know when they come with their stash of catnip that I had just given them. So uh, it it got good ratings from colleagues and friends. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Um, I think that is all of my questions. Does if anybody else has a question for Yaz, uh, please drop it in the comments. Um, I am going to share the link to her blog as well, chirpycats.com. I'm going to drop that in the comments because I know I've because I look on it fairly often for Pinterest. My Pinterest board. I have a whole Pinterest board for catios, and most of it is all your. Your book. <laughs> so you can find a lot of DIY instructions and stuff on Yaz's website, trippycats.com. And then um, I'm going to share here um, Trippy Cats on Instagram as well. So if you guys um, definitely check her out. And do you have a, a list of all the cat friendly plants and stuff that you mentioned on your website too? I do. Um, I will actually share that with you. It's in it's in one of my blog posts. Um, okay. Actually, most of it I keep updating that blog post. Um, yeah. It's a cat gardens, cat friendly gardens. Okay, I'll yeah. I'll put that one and include it in a follow up email to everybody. If yes, if you guys are who are watching um, either live or on the replay. If you are not already on my email list, drop your email address in the comments or private message me on Facebook and I'll, I'll be sure to include you on the email that I'm going to send out probably tomorrow or Friday with uh, just follow up links to everything. Cause I know everybody is so interested in all the things that you've talked about tonight. Great. Um, let's see. You've got a couple of comments. Um, any ideas for winter indoor enrichment? Oh, absolutely. So I do have another, I've, I've actually, most of my indoor enrichment um, DIY hacks have, to, it's always about bringing the outdoors indoors um, because I miss the catio so much. Can you tell? <laughs> so it always has to do with whether I'm foraging for, for, for natural um, objects from outside to bring it inside. So um, I did recently make a, um, and this is also a blog post to come, a teepee for my cats made out of um, um, branches and pruned vine leaves from my columnicta vine that I grow in the catio that's on the periphery of the catio. So um, no prunings go to waste. So it all got used for this TP. So what's nice about it is that you can dress it up, you can bring it indoors and you can make it into, you can dress it up as a cat Christmas tree. I also have another indoor enrichment idea was making a cat um, enrichment Christmas tree, um, which I share every holiday. <laughs> and it's, I've uh, seen that one. It's have really you seen it? Yeah. yeah. Um, so that is also made uh, with natural objects and it's an actual, it's a tiny, it's, a, it's about um, two feet high. And it's also made with the pruned branches of the columnicta vine, which is related to um, silver vine. Oh. Um, and the cats actually, um, no studies have officially been done on actinidia um, uh, columnicta, which is the cousin of silver vine. But I do think that there is some effect on the cats because the cats love rubbing, um, rubbing their noses on, on the branches. So these, um, the Christmas tree is made up of, but you don't have to use you can use any cat friendly vine or branches and um you know make you make a christmas tree but um i should send that link over to you uh, for an yeah. indoor and you can dress it up any way you can dress it up whether it's for a christmas tree or you can dress it up for easter um the same with the grass pond uh, that that i've made so your 
cats would enjoy their cat salad. Um, you know, making a cat salad bar uh, for yeah. indoors is also popular with the cats. They absolutely love it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Gosh, I I need to go on a shopping spree tomorrow to buy all these plants and pots and all these things because I'm so excited. I can't wait to try and hopefully I won't have this. <laughs> 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 yes, I want to see your cat here with all the spider plants and the Swedish ivy and the creeping Jenny and all your beautiful uh, cosmos flowers and sunflowers and all of those things. Yes, <laughs> yes. Right now it has nothing. It is very bare. Uh, we do, we have like shelves for them to climb on and, um, but no plants. So I need, well, this was my attempt to rectify that, but <laughs> Um, that was kind of a fail, so <laughs> I'm going to try again now that I am armed with some information and tips. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so um, unless anyone else has uh, any more questions for Yaz, um, I, I guess that's it. Just thank you so much for, for taking the time to do this and answering all of our questions. You've been a wealth of information. and um i just can't thank you enough for being here tonight oh it was my pleasure um i just want to remind everybody that our next episode of kitty cat go live will be um wednesday june 9th at 8 p.m um eastern time our guest for that episode will be janice garza from sparkle cat um she's going to be talking to us about road tripping and flying with cats and then hotel stays with cats like hotel safety and etiquette and stuff like that. Her and her cat Sparkle, or Summer, um, they do a lot of traveling or pre-COVID. Um, so hopefully we'll all be traveling again soon and all of the information Janice has to share with us will um, come in handy soon. So thank you guys all for being here. Um, that's it for tonight. I will be sure to send out a follow-up email to everybody with all the links that Yaz is gonna send to me. And yes. uh, I'm gonna close things out with a video of Yaz's catio. Um, it's like a 30 second clip, so be sure to stay on because um, you'll definitely wanna see this video. All right, thanks everybody. Thanks everyone. Video.